Good evening and welcome. My name is Jerry McDermott. I'm the Media and Communications Manager here at Fingal County Council, and I will be your host for tonight's webinar on the Fingal Coastal Way. The Fingal Coastal Way is a proposed greenway extending from Newbridge to Maine in Donabate to the Fingal County boundary north of Balbriggan. The, um, it, it, it's going to be 32 kilometres long, depending on the, uh, the route selections. And the purpose of tonight's uh, webinar is to allow you to meet some of the key people involved in the project and for them to give you some of the information in relation to it that will help to inform your submission. The Fingal Coastal Way is envisaged to be a flagship scheme for tourism in the county with the potential to promote and enhance the local tourism economy. It will also be a major amenity for the residents of Fingal. At the moment, Fingal County Council is, is undertaking the route option selection process for the Fingal Coastal Way, and we're seeking your input. So that's why we're all here tonight. This is the first of two webinars we are holding as part of the consultation process for the Fingal Coastal Way. Tonight, we'll be examining the northern section from Skerries to Balbriggan, and next Tuesday, we look at the southern section from Donabate to Skerries. And if you want to join us on Tuesday night, you can book a place at fingal.ie forward slash Fingal Coastal Way. This non-statutory public consultation process commenced on April the 15th and is running until May 27. And it's important that we hear what you think of our plans. So the purpose of tonight is to give you an opportunity to hear from the key people involved in the project. They are going to go through the plan and hopefully it will, help, it will help inform your submission. And remember, submissions can be made at www.consult.fingal.ie. I have three guests with me tonight, and you'll hear from each of them during tonight's presentation. Paul Carroll is a senior engineer in the Planning and Strategic Infrastructure Department with responsibility for transport planning and strategic transport projects. Keanu Kalakor is a senior executive engineer in the Planning and Strategic Infrastructure Department and is a member of the Fingal Coastal Way project team. And Stephen Wise is a senior engineer with Atkins Ireland, who are the consultants to Fingal County Council on the Fingal Coastal Way project. We will shortly have presentations from Keen and Stephen, and after the presentations, they'll be joined by Paul on our panel for the questions and answers sessions. And if you want to submit a question, you can go to the Q&A facility, which you'll find in the top right hand corner of your screen, and you can type in your question there. Questions to Paul, Keen and Stephen. Uh, we, we, will, we will facilitate as many of them as possible, and those that are not answered will be passed on to the project team for consideration in the consultation process. And if you do have any technical issues, do bear with us and we will endeavour to resolve them as soon as they arise. Now, before we go to tonight's presentations, I'd like to invite Paul Carroll, Senior Engineer in the Planning and Strategic Infrastructure Department, to formally welcome you to tonight's event. Paul. Thanks, Jerry, and good evening, everyone. Uh, delighted to be here tonight to talk about the Fingal Coastal Way. As Jerry said, we hope is our flagship greenway project in the county. Um, the Fingal Coastal Way has been a long-standing objective of Fingal County Council, and our vision for the scheme is really high-quality amenity that's delivered in conjunction with the local community, and for the benefit of the local community as well as the wider economic and tourism use that Jerry mentioned. Um, this is the second phase consultation that we're going to that we're going through. Um, there'll be further phases to follow as the design and the planning process progresses and the, the, the design gets more refined, we're able to answer more detailed questions. Um, we acknowledge, I suppose, that there will be challenges in delivery and design of any scheme of this scale. Um, at 32 kilometres, it's, it's, a, it's a long scheme, it's going through some beautiful countryside, some um, more congested towns and villages, so there will be challenges, but we look forward to working with you all to meet those challenges and to deliver what I think will be a really high quality uh, facility that will be as good as anywhere anywhere in the world. So that's what we hope to um, achieve from tonight and from the overall process, as I say, and as Jerry mentioned, we do want to work with you. We do want to hear what you have to say. That's not just lip service. We're, we're, we're working hard to make sure that we do get um, benefit of, of local knowledge that we may not be aware of, for example. So we hope that you find tonight interesting and useful. 
if we don't get to your specific query tonight, um, please make a submission and we'll deal with it. We'll work through all the submissions that we receive. So thanks a million again for tuning in tonight and for your time and to everyone who's made a submission already. Thanks for that. And I'll hand you back to Jerry. Thanks. Thank you, Paul. And uh, you'll have an opportunity to, to pose questions to Paul and, and the rest of our uh, panelists later on uh, in this webinar. So let's go to our first presentation this evening, which is an overview of the project and the public consultation process. Here's Kian O'Callacore. Good evening. My name is Keen O'Kelliker. I'm a senior executive engineer with the Planning and Strategic Infrastructure Department of Fingal County Council. And I'm going to give you a project overview presentation on the Fingal Coastal Way. The Fingal Coastal Way aims to provide a coastal walking and cycling route linking Balbriggan, Skerries, Lochshinny, Rush and Dunabate. This will ultimately form part of a, a larger route from Dublin city centre to Sutton Cross, from Sutton Cross to Malahide through the Sutton to Malahide scheme, from Malahide to Dunabate and Newbridge to Maine through the Broad Meadow Way scheme, which has planning approval from on board Planola, and then our scheme from Newbridge to Maine to Balbriggan. The scheme has rural and urban elements of Greenway extending approximately 32 kilometres. It'll encourage tourism, recreation and business, offering an attractive sustainable transport choice for residents, businesses, school children and commuters. We previously undertook a public consultation in November 2019. Um, information was posted to the consult portal, public information nights were held and questionnaires were filled out. That public consultation helped to inform the stage one feasibility and route optioneering. A large number of feasible routes were examined, circa 10 routes. The main assessment criteria were engineering, environment and economy. And the feasibility and options assessment stage one report was developed. This report is essentially what we are consulting on through this consultation. This feasibility and options assessment report reduces the number of routes from 10 to between three and five routes per section. They're to be assessed in the stage two route options assessment. We acknowledge that some areas and in particular scaries have more limited options. Following on from this public consultation, we will publish a public consultation findings report and we will welcome your submissions on the stage one report and the proposed routes. Uh, the diagram here represents the project timelines to date and the future projected timelines. At present, we're at options assessment and the purpose of this consultation, this phase, is to inform our decision-making process when we, as we move towards the emerging preferred route. So the project is done in stages. We started at 10 routes. We're now at between three and five. And we want input to help us move to one route where preliminary design can commence. Uh, this route options public consultation is a non-statutory online public consultation. It is It opened on the 15th of April and will be open until the 27th of May. Online information is available on Fingal County Council's website and its consult portal. Fingal County Council are not in a position to hold in-person events due to the COVID-19 pandemic. We would hope as the project progresses into the next phases and ongoing consultation is engaged in, that, that there may be a return to some in-person um, meetings and events. Our website and consort portal includes information video, concept sketches, route options maps, feasibility and options assessment report, 
questionnaire. Frequently asked questions and details on how to make a submission. Submission should be made online via our consultation portal or by post. And the final date for receipt is midnight on the 27th of May. As previously stated, we haven't developed any preliminary designs at this stage, but we have developed a concept of what we'd like the scheme to look like, look like on completion. Here's some some of the concepts around the Balbregan area, Balbregan Beach, Braymore and Fancourt Heights. Some more concept sketches in the Skerries area on the or 127 Balbregan Road and Skerries South Beach. This one is um, along the coast near Loch Shinney. And further concept sketches at Bond Road in Rush and Newbridge House in Dunabate. So the next steps for us on the project are to identify any issues of local concern through this consultation process, identify key project stakeholders. We'll review all comments, queries and suggestions made through this consultation. This will help to inform the development of the emerging preferred route and facilitate the preliminary design process. Another public consultation period will be undertaking, undertaken following this. And ultimately due to the complexities, of the project, a planning application will be made to Umbor Pranola. That's the end of my presentation and I'll be available to answer questions following the presentations. Thank you. Um, thank you, Kian. And uh, as Kian said, he will be available to answer questions later on in the presentation, along with Paul Carroll, uh, who's our senior engineer, and also Stephen Wise, from our consultants, Atkins. And now we turn to uh, Stephen Wise from Atkins and he's going to talk to us about those uh, route selections. So Stephen, over to you. Hi, my name is Stephen Wise from Atkins Consulting Engineers. Uh, my presentation today will be focused on the route options assessment that has been carried out to date which is the subject of this public consultation process. The study area for the Finnegal Coastal Way encompasses a large part of the North County Dublin coastline and extends from Newbridge Domain in the south to the Fingal Meath border in the north. It is approximately 32 kilometres long in total and includes the towns of Donabate, Rush, Loch Shinny, Skerries and Balbriggan. For our assessment purposes, the study area has been split into two work packages. This evening we're discussing work package two, which extends from just south Scaries to the Fingal Mead border just past Balbriggan. This work package is shown in the blue squares on the map we're looking at at the minute. Each work package is then further broken down into subsections to allow as many routes as possible to be examined. Work package two is broken into four subsections, each focusing on a different area, which we will discuss in further detail. We are currently at stage one of the route options assessment process as shown in the diagram here uh, with the red circle. This involves identifying as many feasible routes as possible and carrying out a comparative assessment of these routes using the criteria of engineering, environment and economy. This allows us to reduce the large number of routes in each subsection down to between three to six preferred routes, which will then be further assessed in detail as part of the stage two of the process. It should be noted that at this stage, we're primarily looking at possible corridors that the coastal way may travel along. The exact form and layout of the proposed scheme will be further developed as it progresses and will be tailored to suit different environments. 
the lines shown on the following maps are all indicative only and show these corridors where multiple routes overlap. They are shown side by side for visibility purposes, but this does not mean that a particular route is proposed to be located exactly in the position as shown. And they'll give a brief overview of the assessment carried out so far, beginning with subsection 2A, which encompasses the town of Scaries. 12 possible routes were initially identified, and these include some routes which stay along the coast throughout, some which travel along the R128 and 1, 1, R127, and some further inland, including along Barnagira Road. So we can see there, the majority of the routes do stay relatively close to the coast, either right on the coast, uh, some of them up Key Street and Horace Rock. There are a couple of routes that do travel up Main Street, um and nearby streets as well and then a couple that are sort of a bit further out inland uh, towards Scaries mills and through residential areas uh, the results of the stage one assessment are summarized in the table here where the green color means that uh, that, that route has advantages under the relevant sub criteria compared to other routes Yellow means all routes are comparable and orange means that a route has disadvantages when compared to other routes. The routes of the most green colour are the preferred routes uh, and in this subsection uh, that is routes 2, 3, 4 and 6. These routes will now be brought forward to the detailed stage 2 assessment and are shown on the map here. For easier reference, the routes for stage 2 are colour coded only. The legend in the bottom right corner shows the relation between the routes um, uh, to the stage one maps. In this area, the preferred routes all travel along the seafront following the existing pathway before accessing Key Street and Horse Rock. From there, they travel along the R127 before diverging towards the western end, with three of the routes traveling towards Barnagira Road, utilizing an existing laneway and across open fields while one route remains on the R127 throughout. The main advantages uh, that these options have over other options are their exposure to an ex excellent coastal experience and associated views, linkage to Scary's Head and its associated amenities, views and heritage, uh, reduced usage of unattractive distributor roads and accessibility and minimised disruption to the town centre. Subsection 2B extends from north of Scaries to just south of Balbriggan. The majority of the initial nine routes identified in this section run adjacent to the R127 and the train line, while a number also travel directly within Argyllan. So the majority of them run fairly close to the uh, R127 itself, while there are uh, a number of routes that do diverse into Argyllan and travel up through it. The results of the stage one assessment show that there are three preferred routes in this section, routes one, two, and four, which all have a number of advantages compared to other routes. These routes will progress as a stage two assessment and are shown on this map. All three routes are located on the eastern side of the R127, with one route staying close to the coastline, uh, one route following the road throughout, uh, and one which diverts into Castlelands at its northern end. All of these routes uh, would provide access to Argyllan via either an upgrade of the existing Lady Stairs Bridge or a new structure. The main advantages of this, these routes is their exposure to an excellent coastal experience and associated views, their directness and attractiveness to support travel between Scaries and Balbriggan, and the minimal impact on the environment. Subsection 2C generally encompasses the town of Balbriggan. Um, there are a wide array of routes identified on the stage one maps, uh, 14 in total, which utilise a number of possible ways of travelling through the town. These include routes which stay close to the coast, uh, some which travel along the R127 and or, uh, also on the R132, so we've a number that travel up here, uh, and some that diverse more directly into the town and along the main road at the R132, and then some which uh, travel through Mill Pond Park. Uh, out to the west here. A number of routes uh, 
travel along the existing railway do uh, viaduct here, while others access the harbour directly. The majority of routes link to the Bremore Park development uh, via one side of the railway line or the other. The results of the stage one assessment show that there are six uh, routes preferred in this section, routes two, four, five, six, seven, and 13, which all have a significant number of advantages compared to other routes. The routes that will progress to the stage two assessment are shown here. The majority of them travel close to the coast in the vicinity of uh, Hampton Cove and Fancourt Heights, uh, with some variations staying along the R127 in some sections. From there, three of the routes divert onto Sea Point Lane. To access the harbour area, well, one travels over the railway viaduct and one onto Key Street. The pink route is the main outlier and travels further inland through the Mill Pond Park before accessing the harbour area. From here, all of the routes join into Bremore Park. The main advantages of these routes are their coastal experience and views, linkage to noteworthy heritage sites, uh, accessibility to the harbour area and train station, as well as minimising impacts on the main town centre while still providing access to it. Subsection 2D then is the final subsection in this work package, uh, and it generally includes the area from Bremore Park to the Fingal Meath border at the Delvin River. There are 12 routes identified initially in this uh, section, the majority of which starts in Bremore Park to the south. From there, a number of them stay reasonably close to the coast, um, following various field boundaries, while others generally stay close to either side of the railway line, um, before diverting onto the R132 at one of three locations uh, here, here and here. There are also some options which uh, generally stay on the R132, with some local diversions. The results of the stage one assessment show that four routes are preferred in this section, uh, routes three, five, six, and eight, uh, which again, all have a significant number of advantages compared to other routes. Uh, the map here then shows the routes to be carried to uh, stage two assessment for this subsection. These generally travel adjacent to the railway line with two on the eastern side and one on the western side uh, before diverting onto the R127 either at the Delvin River itself or at the local access just to the south. The exception to this is the red route, uh, which travels close to the coast and then follows a number of field boundaries. The main advantages of these routes are the reduced impact on heritage sites, um, the reduced impact on agricultural land and private dwellings, and still generally retaining good coastal experience and views. So that concludes my brief summary of the stage one route options for this work package. Um, I hope it's given some additional insight into the process and I'd encourage everybody to submit their um, views in, in, as part of the consultation which we'll then take on board as we're going forward. So thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. And if you have any questions for Stephen or any of our panelists, please type them into the Q&A box and we'll try to get through as many of them as we can between now and eight o'clock. And as both Keen and, and Stephen have said, if you want to make a submission, you can do so at consult.fingal.ie. Now, let's switch on the microphones of all our panellists and go to our first question of this evening. And it's for Paul Carroll. And Paul, we've got a question in here from a viewer who wants to know, what is the timeline for the delivery of the first elements on the ground? OK, thanks, Jerry. Um, so at the moment, we're at root option stage. Um, during 2021, we'll, we'll develop all of those options and we'll come up with an emerging preferred route later in this year, which there'll be another consultation on. We'll keep we'll keep developing that design. We'll be doing environmental work and engineering design and everything else through the rest of 2021 into early 2022. Um, at that stage, we'll have preferred route around about the middle of 2022 when we'll have another consultation. That'll be the opportunity to have a very detailed consultation with people because we'll know more or less exactly what we'll be doing. The remainder of 2023 then, uh, 2022 will be um, developing up the planning application documentation, submission to the board, 
in late 2022, early 2023. Once it goes into the board, it's generally at least a six month uh, timeline between submission and um, a granting of permission. If there's an oral hearing involved, there could be another few months on that. So I would speculate that 2023 will be taken up with planning process with on board Panola with or without an oral hearing. 2024, we would hope to be um, have a contractor procured and moving towards site and an estimated two year construction timeline for the overall scheme through 2024, 2025. And um, so that's that's kind of a very high level view of what kind of time frame we're working for, working towards. Um, so hopefully that answers the question. That's great, Paul, and we'll keep our fingers crossed that uh, we, we can stick to that schedule. Um, Stephen, if I can turn to you, um, question that, that, that uh, you might be able to answer. Um, how much work has Fingal Council, Council done in relation to the environmental impact and the various wildlife conservation considerations? Uh, thanks, Jerry. Um, yeah, we've there's been a considerable amount of uh, consideration of the uh, environmental impact throughout the process so far. Uh, Atkins have a dedicated environmental team, um, which is directly situated in our office, um, who we liaise with constantly throughout the process. They were involved in the constraint stage, um, collecting and identifying the environmental uh, archaeological um, conservation and associated constraints there at that point. They then also have had feedback, I suppose, um, in the uh, presentation I did, we would have mentioned that the, the assessment was done under three sort of overall headings at this stage, which were uh, engineering, environment and economy. So obviously, you know, economy is, or environment is one of the, the key issues that we're looking at throughout. Um, so our environmental team have been instrumental in the development of the routes so far. Um, and in the assessment to date. They will obviously then will input into the stage two into the detailed assessment as well. And then as we go forward, I suppose, through the uh, preliminary design, etc., and the planning, um, they will, uh, it's likely they'll probably need to do either environmental impact assessment or a nature impact statement. Um, so they are very much key to the whole team. OK, thanks, Stephen. Um, Keen, I'll turn to you now and you, you might be able to answer this one. And I'm going to read it out as it, as it has come in here on my screen. Um, I'm a landowner whose land may be impacted by the scheme. How do I get more information specific to my land? Yeah, I suppose we are at an early stage of our engagement. And just to clarify, the current routes shown are indicative. And generally, the route shown through land banks would follow existing hedgerows, paths, vehicular accesses to minimise any impact on land use. Um, if the routes are impacting your land, we would welcome early engagement um, and you can contact our customer care unit by email identifying yourself as a landowner and requesting a callback and we will engage with you from there. Um, the CPO process that's involved in these kind of schemes. The guidelines for them always set out consultation as the first port of call. And we would always look to reach agreements with landowners on the location of these greenways. So like I said, if you have concerns, you can contact our customer care unit and someone from the project team will, will engage with you from there. And that uh, contact is, I think it's customer care at fingal.ie, uh, isn't it, um, Kian? Yeah. I think that's correct, yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, so hopefully that, that answers your, your query. Um, Paul, when will the Fingal Coastal, or sorry, will the Fingal Coastal Way provide connectivity to Bal Balrothery? Um, I think Balrothery was was slightly outside of our, our study area. I think it was a little bit um, too far back from the coastline, maybe to kind of meet the objectives of the scheme to be away from the main desire line of the scheme, which is to kind of um, stay as close to the, the amenities along the coast as possible. So in, in this iteration of the scheme, I suppose it, it's unlikely to be served. But what I would say is that um, 
at at locations along the route, uh, the entire route, what we will be doing is looking to see what additional connectivity pieces we can put in in terms of access to uh, to adjacent villages or to other amenities or sporting grounds or um, other parks or anything like that. So I suppose this is this is the first kind of um, trunk route, if you will, and um, in time you will see more branch lines coming off this. I've, I've absolutely no doubt about that. OK, thank you. And, and don't forget, um, if you've got questions, please use the Q&A facility. You'll find it in the top right hand corner of your screen. Type in your question. And as I say, we're going to try and get to as many questions as we can between now and eight o'clock. Now, Paul mentioned uh, one of the trunk routes and um, certainly we would have seen from Stephen's presentation that the trunk route is going to go through Skerries. And Stephen, we have a question here and um, from the maps provided. It's difficult to understand what the Greenway will look like at Key Street and Hoare Rock in Skerries. So can you provide more information on this, please? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think the key thing to note uh, really in relation to this is that obviously we're at a very early stage. Um, so we're not, you know, we're not looking at the exact layout of um, every area at this point. It's, uh, you know, that will continue on in development as we progress um, the scheme and certainly will be something we'll be liaising with um, the local residents on. Um, you know, it's it's not, there are a couple of different ways we could approach that area. And again, it's not, nothing is decided there and, and it needs to go through that process. But it could, you know, range from literally, you know, road markings and signage on the ground up to like a public realm upgrade intervention. Um, uh, probably leaning towards that sort of um, way of approaching it in that area. Again, I think that that is something that will be ironed out as we, you know, go through the next round of the process. Um, and certainly, I think we will be uh, engaging on that. OK, thanks, Stephen. And of course, if anybody's got any thoughts on it, we'd like to hear them and you can um, send them into consult.fingo.ie. That's what we're looking for during this stage of the process. Your submissions, your thoughts, your ideas. Um, Paul, just you, you were talking there about branch lines and trunk lines and that, and I think that that's probably prompted this particular question. Um, will links be provided from the Greenway to shops, schools and train stations to facilitate commuters? Yeah, I suppose. This this is is probably um, from the imagery in, in the background here. It's probably uh, appears to be a very recreational route and a tourism route, and, and that's that's what it is. But we we would see it as being for for such a, a large investment and for such a significant scheme, we would see this being a multifunctional uh, corridor, and we will be trying as best we can to make sure that not only does it serve that. Uh, recreational use and the, the leisure and amenity users for people to walk, cycle, uh, push the buggy or go for a jog or whatever it is. Um, we want to link it up to as many amenities and as many, as many facilities as possible, including train stations, uh, schools, sports grounds, uh, beaches, uh, you know, and, and the village centres. That was a really important one for us as well. There's a number of villages and towns along the route and I suppose um, what international experience in the design of these kind of schemes would show is that people do want to get out into the countryside and experience everything that that has to offer and and this route will offer that in abundance but people also need to be able to have easy accessibility to those town and village centers which have uh, the train stations which have the coffee shops and the, the public toilets and the restaurants and bars and everything else that goes with that so yeah, we we it's it's getting that that overall balance right along the route that we will be trying to do. So um, definitely looking forward to hearing people's input into into what um, what aspects of that um, they want us to incorporate. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, another question here: um, Have the team been in contact with the Gardaí regarding the potential for antisocial behaviour on the Greenway? Keen, I, I might put that one to you. Hi there. Um, generally on, on projects of this nature, we would engage with Angarda Síochána as we develop the emerging preferred route. That would include the Crime Prevention Unit in Dublin and local Gardaí, local community Gardaí. We've engaged with them on a number of other schemes 
that we're looking at at present. And generally, we would try design out antisocial concerns as we progress the scheme and the Gardaí would review designs for us. That would include, you know, making areas more open to passive surveillance, um, improving boundary security at properties and all those kind of elements. So, you know, as, as we get knuckled down to our emerging preferred route and develop that design at that stage, the Gardaí will be consulted fully. And that would include walking walking areas of the routes and identifying areas where there are existing problems and seeing if we can seeing if we can help out through our design and eliminating some of them. I think from speaking to Angarda Shiakona, they will would inform us that, you know, the more people you have and the more open the routes are, the safer they are through passive surveillance. And I suppose that they would have directed us to a number of studies, particularly in the UK, that that would have shown this. So um, just to sum up, I suppose it's kind of we'll be coming into that end of the stakeholder engagement as, as we develop in the coming months. So. OK, thanks, Kim. Um, I mentioned in my introduction that this is a flagship tourism project for Fingal, and uh, that's obviously prompted a question. Uh, this one here is the Waterford and Mayo Greenways have attracted many tourists. What is the expected usage for the Fingal Coastal Way and has this been considered in the design? Stephen, I might might ask you to come, come back to us on that. Thanks, Terry. Um, so the expected usage um, will form part of the next stage of assessment. Um, when we have an emerging preferred route, we, we need to do a project appraisal. Um, which part of that will be obviously trying to um, put a, a monetary value on um, the number of people who will visit and obviously the leisure benefits the local community as well. Um, there, that is a whole exercise that needs to be done um, in terms of the emerging preferred route, which will include obviously calculating expected usage numbers. We would anticipate it, you know, at a high level that it is likely to be similar to maybe the Waterford one or even higher. Um, and that would be the plan, obviously, from from Fingal's point of view to make it a flagship scheme. So there will be that will be considered in the design because it does have a direct influence on the, the required widths for a greenway. So that will be, I suppose, when we have the emerging preferred route, that that uh, calculation will be done in, in some detail and that will impact the design at that point. OK, thank you, Stephen. And um, just to clarify, um, we gave an email address out there a few minutes ago just in regard to the fact if you're a landowner and uh, you wanted to engage with the project team in relation to your land, the, we, we said you should uh, email our customer care unit. The actual email address for them is customercareunit at fingal.ie. That's customercareunit at fingal.ie if you want to get in touch with the project team. Um, now let's move on. Uh, Stephen, a, another one for you. Um, there are a limited number of routes in Skerries. Why was Route 12 not brought forward to the next stage of assessment? Uh, so uh, I suppose from the presentation you would have seen um, in the stage one uh, maps that there was you know, a large number of routes considered in each area and they were all subjected to the same comparative assessment. So if a particular route hasn't got through, it's because it has um, it doesn't have the advantages that the preferred ones do or in fact has quite a lot of disadvantages. Um, so under the three headings of the uh, economy and engineering and environment and in relation to the you know the objectives that we're trying to meet for the Fingal Coastal Way that that route would have been disadvantageous in comparison. So uh, I suppose that's sort of a generic um, answer to any particular route if it hasn't got through that's the reason why it hasn't been as advantageous as the other routes uh, when the comparative assessment was carried out. Okay thank you Stephen. Keen if I can turn to you uh, we have a question here from one of our viewers wanting to know how have stakeholder con consultations been carried out so far? Um, we previously carried out a consultation in 2019 that was the initial consultation. I suppose this phase of the project is the commencement of the wider consultation um, and an attempt to bring stakeholders to us on the project and begin that engagement process and, and help us develop the emerging preferred route. So um, to date, um, there was the one public consultation that was undertaken. 
OK, thanks, Cian. Um, Paul, if I can come back to you now, um, a question here. Will the council look at other routes based on feedback from this consultation? Yeah, ab absolutely. Um, I suppose the purpose of this, as I mentioned at the outset, it's not just to pay lip service to consultation, it's to get a meaningful um, engagement with the local community and to, to get um, to get that, uh, you know, substantive feedback back into us. And if if there's particular uh, areas that we have shown routes going through, for example, that uh, turns out not to be a very good idea for reasons that we may not be aware or for the views of the local the local community will then the purpose of this is to to tease all all of that out so it's 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 kind of a, it's an iterative process it's maybe it's a slow enough process I, I know some people might be frustrated uh with you know the, the speed at which these things go but um the reason that we do take this slowly is that we want to be as careful as possible and make sure that we do have every uh, every avenue closed off when we come down to make those really crucial decisions around preferred route and around the exact route that we're going and around the, the, the detailed design issues that we're going to encounter because we're conscious that you know, there's there's a lot there's a large population along here. There's a lot of houses, a lot of properties. There's a lot of um, farm holdings. There's a lot of ecologically sensitive areas. There's a lot of engineering challenges in terms of um, land gradients and and you know bridges and beaches and dunes and um, you name it. This roof will have it over such a length. So we'll take it slowly. And any information that we get um, from the public on that, we'll, we'll greatly appreciate and, and we'll we'll definitely. Um, taken on board as much as we can. So just Paul to to paraphrase another question that's that's come in here. Um, uh, Fingal Con County Council will consider routes proposed and will take an approach whereby high density populated areas are avoided and routes uh, switched on to existing roads. Um, not not necessarily. Um, you know, as Kane said, and as I mentioned earlier, we we. we in certain instances, we want to go to the high density areas because that's where that's where coffee shops are. That's where the the interchanges are with the with the buses and with the trains. And um, so, I suppose I wouldn't I wouldn't agree with that blanket statement. But in other instances, it may be appropriate to uh, avoid higher density areas and to use existing roads. And um, it's about getting the balance right along the entire route corridor. And I suppose, as we, as we mentioned, at, 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 I think Ian mentioned in his presentation, where there are particular smaller areas like housing estates or particular areas of housing, so we will we will engage on a more detailed level with uh, groups of residents or residents associations or or the representatives on that to kind of talk about those more detailed things where we can tease out uh, tease out and, uh, those issues in a bit more detail and and have a more uh, more. Uh, practical discussion on that. OK, thanks, Paul. Um, Kian, um, is there an opportunity to include public realm improvements as part of the scheme, like more panoramic viewing areas along the route with picnic tables and bins? Um, certainly, yeah, the, that is one of the objectives of, of the public engagement. Um, local people will be aware of local areas that may be of significance. Um, it's not simply an exercise in, in laying a strip of tarmac from A to B along the coast. We we want to provide a high quality route, as Paul has mentioned, and we we will also be engaging with our arts officers um, to see what opportunities are along the route. And we would like people um, to make submissions on that, you know, um, and we can apply that local knowledge then to our design as we as we proceed with the project. So when you say you want you want people to come into you with the local knowledge, what exactly are you looking for? So if, if there's areas of particular local interest or areas of amenity that locals enjoy that we might not necessarily be aware of, but may be significant um, to them locally, um, th there are areas that could be identified to us. There, there is an opportunity for placemaking also along the route. So. Oh. 
OK, that's great. Well, um, if you want to make a submission to the team, you can do it at consult.fingal.ie and we're looking to get as many submissions as possible in order to ensure that we hear your what you have to say. Um, moving on, uh, keep the questions coming in. We're, as I say, we're going to try and get as many of them done between now and eight o'clock. Stephen, uh, one for you. Uh, will coastal erosion and the impacts of climate change be considered in the design um, and has flooding been considered in the route assessment? Uh, yes, is the answer to, to both of those. Um, I suppose they have been considered even in the stage one assessment. Um, you probably noticed that a lot of the, the routes that have got through stage two are not directly on the coast. Um, and are, you know, a lot of them are kind of set back, say one field boundary inland. And a lot of the reason for that is allowing for climate change um, in the future, um, you know, and, and the fact that, you know, being on beaches and the like isn't always the correct thing to do in these areas, um, given the rate some of them are eroding. Um, in terms of flooding, that has also been uh, assessed as part of the stage one um, assessment and all of the flooding areas were mapped as part of the constraints as well. So that comes directly from um, the OPW's flood mapping, which they've done quite a lot of modelling on. Um, so it, that's all been considered as well. Yeah. OK, thanks, Stephen. Paul, if I can turn to you, uh, will compulsory purchase orders be required to deliver this scheme? OK, um, I suppose the, the, the short answer is they may be. Um, the longer answer is that we would hope to engage as early as possible, as Cain mentioned earlier, with any potentially affected landowners at this stage and as the Route options are refined down to a smaller number, and eventually to the to the preferred option. Um, we'll know exactly what in what um, impact we're going to be having on particular land holdings, and we would always seek to um, acquire land through agreement in the first instance. Um, that would be our preferred our preferred approach, and um, that has has worked well for us in the past. And we you know we we. We're a, we're a public organisation, so we we have we play a pretty straight bat on these things, and we'll engage with people as best we can. So um, so hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, thanks, Paul. And I just have one more for you here. Um, what about the options that do not require planning permission? Could they be established before the time frame that you suggested? And um, the person here is thinking of the R127 from Skerries at the North Beach entrance towards Balbriggan. Um, I suppose at that particular location, I think um, if it's the one I'm thinking of, we, there was a proposal for us to do a, a temporary kind of um, COVID related intervention um, with probably flexible bollards or some sort of traffic management arrangement there. Um, as we work through the process, we'll be able to see what, how, those kind of temporary options align with what we're going to do. And that may be possible to do it by, uh, by Fingal County Council through, uh, through either our own section or another section within the council as, as a shorter term or a temporary intervention. But as regards the Fingal Coastal Way as a project, um, it wouldn't be something that we would, would be able to do to split off parts of a project. We have to kind of keep this as one project now and do an overarching assessment and an overarching design so that um, we're not seen to be trying to um, put in a large scheme as in a piecemeal manner, you know, as a number of small schemes, for example, that might have the same overall length, but we, 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 we have one scheme and to, to not fall foul of any planning or any environmental assessment legislation now <clears throat> we will keep this as one scheme um, but as I say there may be other um, shorter term interventions that can happen through different through different av avenues from uh, from Fingal County Council and that particular one is is one that's that's on our radar. OK, um, Stephen, I'm just going to turn to you with a couple of more root questions and I, I have two here, so I'm going to put the two of them together. Um, first one is, will certain parts of the route have to be one way for regular traffic and will the Greenway provide segregation between cyclists and pedestrians? 
Um, so again, the answer to this is probably you know similar to some of the previous ones in that the exact form of the greenway isn't you know 100% decided on at this stage and you know that is something that we'll have to work through as as we get through the, the stage two and then the the preparation for the route and the preliminary design but we would envisage the places where it, some of the traffic may be one way yes for sure um that is one of the interventions we will we will be looking at um and the segregation issue um again look it, it, there's kind of a typically a greenway is a shared facility i suppose you know that is kind of the way we would be looking at it at the minute again with the caveat that we you know we're nothing is set in stone here on this there i think people sometimes get hung up on the segregation being a great idea when in reality that's not necessarily the case um for these types of schemes that there is benefits to providing a shared um area you know uh, less impact on lands less impact on the environment there's more flexibility for for use um if you think about somebody who might be using it to commute in the morning that they're likely to have quite a wide facility to use um when there's not that many pedestrians on it um so you end up hopefully getting the best of both worlds um the fact that your pedestrian cycle is sharing this, the same space in a a greenway context is actually sometimes a good thing in that people tend to be more kind of relaxed about it. you know you don't have that territorial behavior um so there are benefits to it being shared as well um which may not be immediately obvious um to people so uh, you know with the caveat that it's not set in stone the idea that we'd be looking at at the minute would be generally a shared um facility and Stephen, will the greenway be the same width throughout, or will there be different levels of intervention? The, it's a good question. Um, I mean, we like typically we'll be trying to make it, um, you know, reasonably wide to facilitate um, as many people as possible. Um, that may not be possible in all areas, and again, that's something that will have to be, you know, ironed out as we go through. Um, you know, areas such as the towns, it might need to be a narrower. Um, facility just you know given the lack of available space and, and building lines etc there may be places where it won't be just a greenway it'll be a shared space um you know or lines on the ground that were mentioned about key street for instance um so it's not just going to be you know a big wide uh three or four meter wide path everywhere it will vary as we go through it um again as i was saying the um the greenway itself will be tailored to the environment in each specific area. OK, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Keen, can I turn to you and uh, just one that you might be able to answer? Um, why did my neighbour receive a letter about the Fingal Coastal Way scheme, but I didn't? Um, in promoting the consultation, we issued circa 20,000 leaflets along the route corridors, but also two and a half thousand landowner letters with any properties that were within 15 meters of any of the routes. Um, the mechanism for that is through the Property Registration Authority of Ireland. So if a property doesn't appear on their database, we have no mechanism for identifying the landowner. Um, that That's the industry standard procedure for identifying landowners. Um, and, you know, other, other than that, I don't really have an explanation for it, other than it may, your property may not be on the Property Registration Authority of Ireland's database, but, uh, but I can confirm that. Yeah, and is there anything that person can do? Should they maybe reach out to you? Yeah, again, if, if they are an affected landowner or one of the routes has gone through a land bank, again, to contact the, the customer care unit, um, I think it was customer care unit at fingal.ie and um, we will endeavour to get back to them and make contact with them on that. And just, just while I have you, just one more question. Um, what is the proposed surface of the pathway and will it be fully lit along the entire route? Um, the the actual specification hasn't been decided yet. Um, it would certainly be a bituminous material, I'd imagine, so, so a tarmac route. Um, I know along some of the canals it's done in a dust material, but um, that's something we'll be developing over time. With regards to lighting the route, 
in urban areas it'll be lit. Um, how far into the environments around the urban areas the lighting might extend again will be decided as the scheme progresses, but certainly within any urban areas public lighting will be provided. OK, thanks. Now we're fast running out of time, so um, Stephen, uh, one here is quite a specific question. Um, what are the options to bring the route through the narrow bend that is immediately before the turn uh, off to Ardgillen, north of Skerries? Um, so, yeah, I suppose that, that is quite a specific question, all right. Um, again, you know, we're looking at corridors at the minute. We're not looking at, you know, defined solutions necessarily. There would be a number of options there that which could range from, you know, uh, a shuttle system for the traffic and taking a lane off the road or uh, running to the side of the road there and on a structure across the, um, there's a pathway down to the beach there. So, you know, there there are multiple ways of doing that there. Of what the final solution will, will be uh, at that location still will have to be decided. Just one more for you. Uh, will hedgerow retention influence the selection, the route selection? Um, yeah, I suppose, uh, you know, the, the way we've tried to locate um, the routes generally, you know, we're not aiming to take out all the hedgerows. You know, obviously that would be a quite large environmental impact, which is something we're trying to avoid generally. Um, in the more rural areas where I suppose that's mostly a problem, um, we are we would generally be kind of saying we'd run one side of the, the hedge line or the other in in a field um, if you want to put it that way so i mean the intention would be obviously to keep the hedgerow as is and run beside it okay thanks stephen um just a quick one key and if you could answer this one uh, as short as possible will there be additional parking provided for people wanting to drive and cycle again um as we'd be attempting to attract people to these routes and I'm, I'm, I'm aware of people within Fingal who who cycle to the Royal Canal route in Kildare and and use that route um, certainly that's a consideration for us going forward um, particularly you know around around the towns in general where, where, where people might see some of those towns as destination points and might like to, to park and cycle into the into the harbours or the beaches so so that's something we'll be considering along with our design as we progress it again, again in, in terms of place making as well also. OK, th thanks very much, Kim. Um, just time for our last question, um, and I'm going to ask this to Paul Carroll. Um, what are the next steps in the process, Paul? OK, thanks, Jerry. Um, next steps, we have another couple of weeks or another few weeks to go on this consultation period, and um, we've already got a, a, a decent number of submissions in. To, through our portal and um, we'd expect a lot more to come in before the end the end of the consultation period on, on the 27th of May so nearly another month um, left to do that we'll spend a good bit of time reviewing them and seeing what impact that has on our route uh, option selection and developing up our emerging preferred route over the summer with a view to consulting again on that in in the autumn of this year um, in the meantime, then important part of the work then is to undertake that uh, more detailed consultation with um, both residents associations and, and groups of groups of uh, residents in particular areas, uh, as well as the landowners that are potentially affected. So, in a nutshell, I suppose more consultation, more detailed uh, liaison with with local local residents, local businesses, local groups, and um, keep developing the um, design and the assessment of the scheme with a view to, to having that uh, next consultation period in the autumn of this year. Right, thanks Paul. Well, unfortunately we've run out of time. Um, if your question hasn't been answered, don't worry, it will be forwarded on to the project team for consideration. Thank you to everybody who did submit questions or comments and thank you all for logging in tonight. I do hope you enjoyed our webinar. It has been recorded and we will be uploading it onto the Fingal Coastal Way webpage, which can be found at www.fingal.ie forward slash coastal way. Fingal, sorry, forward slash Fingal Coastal Way. There is plenty of information about the project on the website and if you do intend to make a submission, please remember that the deadline for submissions is May the 27th and submissions can be made through our online consultation portal at consult 
www.fingal.ie. My thanks to Paul Carroll, Keno Calicor and Stephen Wise for joining us this evening and providing us with plenty to consider in relation to the overall project and in particular the northern section from Skerries to Balbriggan. I want to thank our production team for all their efforts tonight and I hope you'll join us on Tuesday night for our next Fingal Coastal Way webinar, which will focus on the southern part of the route. It starts at 7 p.m. and you can book your place by going to fingal.ie forward slash Fingal Coastal Way website. So until Tuesday, goodbye and stay safe.